Today I want to talk about everything else that goes on in a CS degree beyond classes. More specifically, I want to talk about self-discovery, internships, networking, and skill building that comes readily available to you as an undergraduate university student. In order to establish some confidence in why you should listen to what I have to say, I will summarize my journey outside the classroom to becoming a jack of all trades, master of none. After that, I'll talk about all the things I mentioned before and which things matter more than others. Oh, and since people apparently really care about these things, here is a teaser of all of the places I got to work at and we'll get to them as I talk about how things worked out. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. First year was one hell of a roller coaster. I was thrust into the world of university life right after finally building enough competency and understanding of myself to do well in high school, and now I was put into an entirely new environment. I will not spare you any of the gory details. Hope you appreciate the ride as much as I did. I went into uni with a couple interests and hobbies from before, so I sought out opportunities based on those interests. As an example, by being the right person, at the right place, at the right time, I got appointed as the Vice President of Information for the University's Scuba Diving Club. Yes, Alberta, the landlocked province, has an incredible community of scuba divers. I know how strange that seems. Anyway, I did not do my job super well, just well enough that it was not worth the hassle of getting rid of me. I cannot believe that I still have a good relationship with the club, given how useless I was. Aside from that, I joined the U of A Problem Solving Club and participated in a couple programming contests. Actually, there was some success there. A couple of my friends and I ended up getting second place in Division 2 of a contest and got to split 150 bucks among three people. I also attended the Hackhead Beta Hackathon with my class partner. We barely cobbled together an Android app that would roll some D&D dice in 24 hours. It was a learning experience and I actually met a couple interesting people there. Oh, and I did start applying for internships for the summer of 2018, then with little success. But this becomes a bit more important later. Moving on to winter 2018, and I have to say, the start of that semester was great. I attended the Hack Ed Hackathon and got third place with a group of friends. It was very fun, but I won't get too into it. I also joined the Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity around that time, and my involvement in it will be much more important later on. Other than that, no more major successes that semester. Matter of fact, aside from a programming contest where I did moderately well with a friend, pretty much nothing of note happened. The toil of my work as the VP information was starting to set in and my internship search was getting nowhere. On the topic of searching for an internship, there is a word in Russian whose English translation does not do it justice. The word is bezizhodnost, but it means so much more than just hopelessness could ever express. I truly felt business after I applied to 200 plus places for the summer. And at every single interview I was passed up only because I was too green. But hopelessness aside, someone I met under a set of unusual circumstances ended up referring me to a job. The first interview was in middle of April and I again got passed up for being too green. But just as I was getting ready to print my resume to walk down White Avenue to get any job I could for the summer, I got a second interview at the same place. It was with a different team doing something entirely different, but they liked me enough that they decided to take me the risk and hire me. That interview was in the middle of my final exams for the winter semester. So let's move right along to summer of 2018, where I got to work as a business analyst intern at WCB Alberta. My job was not glorious. I automated UI smoke and regression tests using C Sharp and the coded UI framework. I was given free reign over the entire process, minimal supervision and very low expectations, but I sat down and learned as much as possible and learned about work and industry. By the end of the internship, the employers loved me and I really liked the environment, but I also learned that I need much more engaging work than what they could ever provide me with. Oh, and before we move on, I also actually did attend the Canadian Undergraduate Computer Science Conference that summer on the university's dime over in Calgary. The trip was kind of worth it, but the conference was not what I expected or wanted. I was not ready to sit there for three days listening to companies talk about blockchain while using only buzzwords. Blockchain is a neat concept, but I really do not care how distributed ledgers will revolutionize the world of bull semen authenticity verification. I really wish I was joking, but I actually had to listen to that for 90 minutes early in the morning. 
With that coming to an end, my second year started. At this point, I actually had a very narrow set of interests that I decided to explore this, this year. I keep referring to narrowing down my interests, but what did I narrow them down to? The answer is this, academics. I became the vice president of academics in the fraternity that I'm in. I became a peer tutor in the first year university residence, and I became a teaching assistant for Compute 274. I loved every part of that work outside of the classroom. Everything was fun and it was really me finally figuring out what I wanted to do with my time. I did relinquish my position as the VP information at the scuba club and someone far more ready to do the job hopped into my shoes. The positions I did take up, I did do well in. Aside from those positions, I also attended the ICPC regional contest. I got carried there pretty hard. I was just a stand-in for my friend that was sick. It was a good time and I did enjoy the free trip to Saskatoon, but Nah. Given that all my time was being taken up by classes and all the side things I was doing, I did not participate in any more hackathons or did any side projects. This will be a relatively common story for the remainder of my degree. Moving on to the next semester. Oh, winter 2019. How I remember you for all the good and all the bad. I was still a peer tutor, still the VP of academics in my fraternity, and still a TA, although I did TA Compute 275 this time around. The semester did start off on a bit of a bad note. We attended the Hackett Hackathon again, but bit off more than we could chew. We got pretty much nowhere and I ended up leaving halfway through due to a bad migraine. Aside from that, I actually secured my next internship around mid-February. I got very lucky with that, as I may have put all my eggs in one basket and only applied to a small handful of companies. Again, there is surprisingly little to talk about here. All the things that I was doing were taking up all my time. I absolutely love being a TA, but there is very little to actually say about it. Additionally, as you know from my previous video, this semester had a crazy workload, so I will end here. And on to summer of 2019, where I got the chance to work at Arista Networks. Given how much I like computer systems, I actually absolutely loved it. I was working with C++ and Python, the two languages that I liked quite a bit then and like still. The work was challenging and engaging, and actually fully used all the systems knowledge I had learned by that point. It was pretty much all that I was looking for at the time. The work was in the greater Vancouver area, and I love the city a lot. As for what I got to do as an intern, I actually spent the summer working with distributed systems at the OS level in the context of computer networking. During that summer, I ended up picking up writing and wrote a couple articles on Medium. They held up decently well in my opinion, but uh, I was just starting out with writing as a hobby. I generally did not expect how much I would enjoy the writing process and writing in general. One thing I did do closer to the end of my internship was attending a local C++ users group meeting. I met a whole bunch of cool people there, and this will be a bit more relevant in the next semester, so let's get to that. When it came to third year, I already more or less knew what I liked and did not like, so I decided to spend a bit of time building more competency in the areas that I did like more than others. In fall of 2019, I ended up living off campus, so I was no longer a pure tutor. Neither was I the VP of academics in my fraternity. Instead, I picked up the roles of being the recruitment chair and the fraternity education chair. Looking back, I kind of didn't do a particularly good job as a recruitment chair, but I did do a very good job in my other role. Additionally, I became the head TA for Compute 274, deciding to TA that class again over being a TA for the databases course. This semester I was far less involved with the U of A problem solving club, but I still wanted to participate in some capacity and our uni hosted the ICPC regional competition. So I volunteered for that, helping set everything up. Last point of note, I actually managed to finalize my internship hunt for the year that semester. By the end of October, I had an offer from EA that I ended up got getting through some connections I made at the C++ users group in Vancouver. By the start of November, I had an offer from Google though, so I ended up taking that. But that comes later, so let's move along to winter 2020. As I mentioned in my previous video, the workload of this semester was insane, and I even loaded up on more non-academic work on top of that. I was actually elected as the president of our fraternity chapter, and had a rough transition. Having to interface with international headquarters every week, running and organizing meetings, managing people, laying out the vision for our chapter, helping other officers when necessary, and managing conflict within our chapter was a lot of work. Oh, and I was still the head TA for Compute 275, so there was that too. In other words, aside from learning so much from being effectively a mid-level manager for a small branch of a multinational business, 
ended up just running around like a headless chicken with a fire extinguisher, trying to keep the fire from burning everything down. The academic workload, the extracurricular workload, being a TA, it all seemed like too much. And yet, I look back on the majority of the semester fondly. But this is not as interesting for viewers as what I did this summer. So let's move right along. As I alluded to before, in the summer of 2020, I worked at Google. Ah, Google, what an interesting place, and yet I never really cared about it. Cool place to work, sure, but I can almost never talk to anyone about it. Not because what I did was super secretive, but more so because I can't actually have a normal conversation on the topic with someone without them losing seemingly all thoughts other than, how did you get in? How can I get in? It's gotten so bad that I almost never talk about it with people that I'm not close to. But I'm making this video so I will talk a bit about my experience. Due to the worldwide pandemic, I worked remotely from Edmonton. The team that I worked with was in Cambridge, with the project owner for the thing that I was working in in Zurich. The team was a bit abnormal for Google. It was an SRE-only team and did not have a corresponding SWE dev team. So I got to try my hand at site reliability engineering. And you know what? If I ever do go back to Google, I would want to be an SRE. Got the scale, the problem space, the tooling, it's all so goddamn neat. And that's kind of what I worked on. I was working in Golang with Kubernetes. The point of the project was to create a similar tool to what exists internally at Google for Borg, but to make it work with Kubernetes uh, to enable cloud native operation. Overall, it was fun, sure, but I think I got really lucky with the team I was working with. Met so many great people, learned so much cool stuff about Golang and SRE. But the thing is, it's just a place to work. If you think that work at any of the fan companies is easy and stress-free, it's not, it's still a job. Due to the size of the company, you end up being a tiny cog in a huge machine battling with all the other cogs for a crumb of impact just to get promoted. There are good managers, there are bad managers, teams with a good work-life balance and teams with a bad work-life balance. Take that as you will. But I did have a good time and a bunch of other people I knew interning and working there did as well. Anyway, that's enough of that, so let's quickly move on to wrap up the first part of the video. And on to the last semester. After three years of university, I finally realized what I like, what works for me, and how to get good results. So let's talk about it. In fall of 2020, I was still the president of our fraternity, but now I at least understood what is expected of me and how to do my job well. Didn't change the fact that running what is effectively a business during the pandemic is far from smooth sailing. Additionally, I was still a TA for Compute 274, effectively organizing all the in-class TAs during class time and helping out some students on the online forums. And you know what? That may seem like a comparatively small amount of things to do on the side, but please consider the fact that classwork was already taking 60 hours of work a week, being the president of our fraternity was taking anywhere between 8 and 10 hours of work every week, and being a TA was another 10 hours a week. That would add up to 80 hour work weeks every week for the duration of 4 months. With that, I'll end the first part of the video. I hope that by this point you're ready to listen to the advice that I want to impart on you. Alright, I will start the advice with the less tangible things. If you're completely new, and about to start your CS degree, you might be intimidated. But please, do your best to not compare your chapter 1 to someone else's chapter 25. The path I took to figure out what I want and what I like was extremely turbulent. Even if you have no prior programming or CS experience before you step your foot into your intro courses, that's perfectly fine. Trust me, as a TA, I've seen truly brilliant students that have never programmed before starting university do incredibly well. Another thing, this major has a weird thing with ego. There will be pricks that you might overhear saying things like, man, I heard this kid doesn't seem to get types. He's so stupid. Don't let it get to you. Everyone learns at their own pace and you really do not need to do all the shiny things in CS to have a good time and be successful. But there are some things that you should consider. First of those are internships, and internships are super important. You should aim to get at least one. And a very large number of students do do only one between their third and final year. Keep in mind, getting that first internship is incredibly difficult. I had so much trouble getting one. And if you're seeking one right after first year, don't be discouraged by the lack of success in your search. 
a surprising amount of people asked me to tell them about the co-op program at the University of Alberta. Well, in CS, there isn't a regular co-op program. There is the science internship program, but it pretty much only offers you to take a single 16 month work term, which is not my thing. Since I did not use SIP, I cannot comment on its quality, but I did hear that it's quite subpar. Piggybacking off of that, if your school does offer a co-op program, try to enroll in it. It can make some things easier and provides a lot of structure for you. If your school does not, then don't worry, there's plenty of opportunity to get an internship independently. All the work I found was not through school. Man, I hoped to not talk about LeetCode at all, but I think I have to. LeetCode is a platform that provides you with the opportunity to practice technical interviews at many tech companies today. I never used the platform, not a single LeetCode question done in my life. To be fair, I did use resources like Cracking the Coding Interview and Hackerang, but I really do not understand people's obsession with lead code. I agree, it's useful, but there is no point in even trying to grind lead code if you aren't getting interviews because your resume is completely barren. People online seem to prescribe grinding lead code as the one-stop solution for all your employment problems in software. It's just a tool, treat it as such. All right, the networking aspect of university is often not talked about in CS. When you are in uni, you have incredible opportunities to talk to professors, other great students, employers at career fairs, and participating in clubs. All of these opportunities to connect with people can lead to some incredible opportunities in the future. Some good places to network are clubs, employer-sponsored events, hackathons, and sometimes even in classes. Also, here's a weirdly underutilized thing. Consider getting involved with tool, language, or technology user groups in your city. They will have people from industry show up, and it's surprisingly easy to make an impression on them if you just show up and show interest to learn. I left what I consider to be the most important thing till the end. Experimentation and self-discovery. God damn, is this an important part of being a student, no matter the discipline. University is the best place to learn what you like and not like. I learned that I love to teach and help people, but I'm not a big fan of raging parties. I learned that I'm good at managing people and resolving conflict, but that for whatever reason, I just can't for the love of God directly organize recruitment efforts. I discovered how fun competitive programming is, but I also discovered that I do not have the dedication to do it well. I would very strongly suggest that anyone, not just in CS, but in any uni program, joins clubs on campus and at least tries out becoming part of the leadership teams. You build some crazy useful skills, from communication to conflict resolution, and you do get to learn how organizations operate. Discovering what you like and what you're passionate about is incredibly important and is what makes us interesting people. Learning about my interests and passions has shaped my future goals and has started me on the path of making YouTube videos. Well, that's about everything I want to talk about today. Thank you for watching. Bye.